So this is my E36 328i, and um, well, it's kind of a piece of crap. I've owned this car for probably two and a half months now. There's a lot of things wrong with it. I'm gonna quickly pull the 400 out of the garage. Door actually works in this car, unlike that piece of crap out there. So I don't really know where I'm going with this video. Um, I just kind of wanted to make a video about this E36. I guess, I don't know, I'll make a buyer's guide video. As much as I talk trash about it, I do really, really love this car. If I were to go back in time and tell myself two months ago, you know, what to look for, this is what I would look for. First is the cooling system on this car. So the cooling system is very flawed from factory. It's all plastic. Plastic will get brittle and break on you over time replace the whole system so that includes you know the radiator the coolant reservoir all of the rubber lines uh what else oil leaks you know the gaskets also break down over time uh right now i have a oil filter housing leak make sure the valve cover is done the oil pan gaskets um the oil filter housing the oil filter housing gasket leaks a lot too um electrical issues I ordered a harness kit for the trunk. Um, yeah, the, it, it's weird. That harness in the trunk gets pinched so easily every time you open and close the trunk that you're almost bound to run into electrical issues. I'm pretty sure every car runs into it. Every E36 runs into it at one point in their lives. Thankfully, this one is still in perfect condition, but I still ordered the repair kit just in case. The headlights can get pretty finicky, but usually they get finicky because of that harness as well. I did a leak down test while I was getting the electrical issues sorted out and they were not good. They were terrible. I think I could be due for a rebuild if those results are accurate. So I'll pop a picture up on the screen here, but cylinders two and five. Cylinder two had 25% and cylinder five had 35%. So, you know, if you don't know anything about leak downs, it essentially tells you how well your motor is sealing. I think five to 10% is like not bad, pretty good. Um, 15 to 20 is where it's like a little worrisome. And you know, 30% or more means, you know, you're, you basically are due for a rebuild immediately. But that's the thing, I feel like it's not accurate because it runs way too good. It doesn't burn coolant, it doesn't burn oil. It might leak a little bit, but it doesn't burn it, which is fine. Um, yeah, no smoke of the exhaust. The oil cap is not milky and it just idles and drives fine. Like it drives very, very good for having such terrible leak down results. So if you're gonna get a car or an E36 or just any car, um, yeah, definitely get a compression and leak down test. You'll, you'll save yourself a headache and all the stress that comes with it after. I'm gonna take you guys off of the tripod here and let's talk about the interior. So the E36 is not known for its incredible interior quality. Running along the door here, up top is like a plastic tab. I added, I don't know if you can see it, but it's somewhere, it runs along the top here. And essentially that breaks down over time and just your, your doors don't clip in from the top. And then it won't clip in from the bottom and the sides, which is the issue that I'm having here. Most E36s will have this problem. The headliner is definitely going to be failing. You know, the glue is terrible from factory. Mine is basically peeling completely. It's stapled right now. So I'm gonna have to overhaul that. That's basically it for the interior. You know, it doesn't have electrical seats or anything. Everything is all mechanical. So it works as it should, which is a huge bonus. Now let's go to the body, rust. Rust is huge on this, these cars. So my undercarriage is clean, thankfully. 100% check the undercarriage because odds are it's gonna have rust on the jack points and you know that's a very very tough and expensive area to fix if you're gonna like just track or drift the car then it probably doesn't matter but for a daily 
or reliability wise, I personally wouldn't. I would just avoid it and find a clean shell. And that's basically it. You know, it's like any other car, it's gonna have its batch of issues, but that does not make this a bad car. This is an incredible car. The M52 in, in my 328 is one of the most reliable BMW motors. After I do all of that and fix this oil leak somewhere, this car should be practically mint. I bought a gasket for my side skirt because the gasket basically completely peeled off. This is insane. They, guess what they're charging for this? They're charging 200 bucks for one side skirt gasket. Like what the hell? I bought OEM chrome replacements for it. So the slats are still black, but the surrounding is chrome, which I think looks really nice with the store blue. Um, as you guys know, I have the brake light on. So I bought all OEM sensors that I'm gonna be replacing for the front and rear. And this is the most important piece. It's an OEM BMW coolant reservoir tank. So of course, you need the OEM reservoir cap with it. I bought an OEM paint pen, which is coming from Germany. Yeah, they charged me out the ass for shipping. I think it was like $80 shipping and it's only like a $50 part. But that is basically, that's it, that's it. This car has been very reliable and uh, yeah, let's, let's take it for a drive. I got a new mic set up, so I'm gonna tape you guys up a little to the exhaust and yeah, we'll go for a quick drive. It is a little rainy today, so. I might have to adjust the mic setup. But yeah, it, it drives so nice. And it sounds pretty good too. Not bad for the stock exhaust. Uh, what else is there? I can't really think of what else you would look for when you're buying this car. Um, your onboard computer can give you false readings, but thankfully mine doesn't, but I've read where you can disable all the codes, but obviously that kind of sucks if something is wrong and you disable the codes and I don't know. If my, my car is OBD1, so you kind of have to do like a pedal dance or like, there's like a trick that you do with, um, the, the pin connectors in the engine bay that you can, you know, use to read your codes. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's not much that I would really say to look for. The biggest just being the cooling system in this car, um, body rust, and making sure the, the motor is healthy with like, you know, good compression numbers, good leak down numbers. This thing is not dailyable whatsoever. So I am just parked out in this beautiful neighborhood park. And yeah, you know, this car, this car looks incredible, especially under the rain. Oh my gosh. And the trees, the blue with the orange corners actually pop out really well. I'm really glad I'm keeping it orange. One day I might switch back to clears, not switch back, just switch to clears. It was orange when I got it, but yeah, this, this car looks so, so good. Like, for a daily driver, it doesn't get much better than this. It looks crazy good from the side with the fitment, and it doesn't affect my drivability at all with how lowered it is. It sounds good, it's fun to drive, it's pretty reliable. Like, there's not much else I can really say, but, um, I think I'm going to end today's video on that note. Um, it's getting pretty dark, pretty gloomy, kind of cold. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of pictures, but yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching if you reached this far, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out and see you later.